Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of In the Spotlight. I'm Mike Canici. Um, Real cool guest today for us because, you know, anybody who does a podcast like myself, we know what the struggle is, what the fun of it is, and everything that goes into it. So it's always nice when we could interview a fellow uh, host who does a show. And uh, he's the host of uh, Pop Culture Retro. Um, he's had some tremendous guests that we're going to discuss. Um, it is my honor to introduce to you Mr. Jonathan Rosen. And Jonathan, thank you for coming on today. It's a real honor. Thanks for having me, Mike. So Jonathan, first off, um, let me ask you, did you like have a career in broadcasting before the podcast? Like, did you go to a broadcasting school? How did the love for uh, podcasting begin for you? I took it in college and then did nothing with it for <laughs> for years and years and years. But uh, it came about just accidentally kind of because it's something that I wanted to do. But I started doing interviews. I was, I'm, you know, I'm an author. I'm a children's book author and was part of a site that uh, dedicated to children's books. And I just started happening to interview people associated for the site, associated with children's books, you know, whether movies and Ike Geisenman was one of them because, you know, Escape to Witch Mountain was a, cho a children's book first. So uh, the, then I started expanding upon that, interviewing other people for the site. And uh, then one day, you know, Ike and I became friendly. And then we said, hey, you know, how about we do a podcast and, on this? So that's the way it uh, came about, like kind of accidentally a little bit. Yeah. And a lot of times, Jonathan, that's the way it happens. I mean, when I know for myself, when I went to broadcasting school, never did I think about ever being, you know, a host of a show or anything like that. My goal was to probably do like play by play or maybe uh, work the board at a radio station, something like that. But sometimes what happens is opportunity comes and you want to take advantage of it. And you and it's amazing just how what starts out is something you're not sure you're going to do as time goes on. Just I mean, the amount of shows you do you look back on it and you're like oh my god did i really do that many shows already so i'm sure that's like the same feeling for you as well no 100 percent. it's just like you know like you just said it happened accidentally but it's just uh i'm having the time of my life i'm enjoying doing it uh i love speaking to the guests and yeah you look back we're we're approaching our 150th show so it's uh you know we only do one a week so it's like been some time now and it's just you know you look back and uh how many I didn't realize that it was like three years now doing it. So it's, you know, it happens before you know it. Yeah. And Jonathan, I think the, there weren't too many positives about COVID, none. But I think um, <laughs> it's the one thing about being stuck indoors a lot that really benefited people like you and myself is the new uh, way of doing things through Zoom, StreamYard, whatever it might be. It allows you to get more guests like you're able to because, you know, I live in Connecticut. I wouldn't be able to interview half the people I've interviewed if I tried to get them to come into a studio. It wasn't going to work that way. So really, this is uh, prohibitive to go to them. Yes. Yeah. But now you could just kind of like uh, reach out to them and do it virtually. And I mean, it, it gives you so much more creativity as a host because you're able to interview so many people. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. That was one of the positives about it. People were willing, you know, more, I think maybe more so at that time, but <laughs> willing to be like, you know, stay in because they were Zoom, they weren't doing anything else. Uh, but, you know, it's it's good. Like, you know, you just pointed out about the numbers. Once you start having the numbers under your belt, it makes it a little bit more, I guess, legit that other people, you know, are like, okay, they've been doing this for a while. They had this many guests or they this certain guest on. So a little bit maybe more willing to come on now. Yeah, exactly. Now, I know for me, Jonathan, the first couple of shows I did, I was still learning how to do this. I was nervous, things like that. I can remember my first show, my opening was terrible because I just had really never had any practice with this. Did you find that happening early on? I mean, uh, was it a little of a struggle, your first few shows? Yeah, it's a little bit, yeah, definitely. I mean, you watch the earlier episodes now, which I can't sometimes. But it's uh, you see, you're get, you're getting your feet under you a little bit. Uh, we because we, you know, Ike and I co-host the show together, so it's kind of when when should someone jump in with their question? 
a little bit more and there were like some maybe awkward pauses, you know, allowing the other person. Now we kind of have it down a little, you know, much smoother now transition than it was back then. Right. So talk to me about who were some of the first few guests you had on your show? I mean, you've had a great group of people, but I mean, were you able to get um, guests early on or was that a struggle? Well, one of the, you know, one of the fun things when I was doing this for the site, you know, it's people were capable interviewed me for the site, but it wasn't on camera. It was like just for, you know, for the children's books. I was called from the mixed up files. I've done a lot of interviews there. So people were willing that, but I just sent them questions to do by writing. Uh, the first few guests that we had, it was, uh, but I was always surprised about who, who was willing to come on even then. But the first few guests we had for pop culture retro were, you know, usually friends of Ike's that, uh, that he knew from the business. Cause Ike, you know, from Escape to Witch Mountain. So he knew several people from Hollywood or whatever. So we had his, the very first guest we had was Steve Lamar, who was, uh, one of the, uh, you know, associate producers on ALF. So, yeah, yeah. and then also Ike was, you know, is, you know, good friends with Matthew Laberto from Little House on the Prairie. So they, they were one, among the first guests that we had. And once they came on and we were able to, you know, I'm able to put that out there with content, you know, the, on the page, it shows a little bit more, hey, this is a legit thing. Again, reference, look at the page. We've interviewed this person and that person. So others was willing to come on. Uh, afterwards. So, you know, the first few shows were definitely more of uh, Ike's guests. And now since then, it's usually me reaching out to people. Yeah. And Jonathan, I think also when you're working with a fellow co-host, it's, I don't want to say the nerves change, but you feel a little more relaxed because there's two of you. Sometimes I think when you go solo, it's harder because you want to make sure you're doing everything right. Whether it, I, I always say this, my opening and my closing are the only things that at times uh, I find difficult, but I mean, when you have like somebody with you as a co-host, that helps a lot too. Cause I, I really feel like, you know, it's, it's a good give and take. There's two sides of that. Yeah. Uh, thankfully and fortunately, you know, I, I get along very well with Ike and we've really never re had a disagreement on anything. It's just really not um, anything that we've had has been really minor on. Th and it's not even like, not an argument, just like minor, what should we do with certain things? But yeah, it is good because you're able to bounce things off each other. And we do we do shows where it's not a guest either. So it's just us talking about certain things like, you know, films or TV shows that we liked or whatever. So it is that is good. But you, there is another side to it, too, that you don't have to account for anyone else. You can do whatever you want to do on a solo show. So you're able to just whatever questions you want to ask, whatever format you want to do, you're able to do that as well. I, I'm you know, probably going to, I might be doing a solo thing also as well. So I'll be probably be doing both, both things together, you know, a cause and one without. Yeah. And the thing of it is though, Jonathan, um, the nerves go away quickly because when you have a guest on that you really want or that you've been trying to get and the, the flow of the interview, you could tell is going good by their response and their reaction. And I think like with me, and I know this is probably true with you, I, is when they kind of compliment you throughout the interview, then you know like they're enjoying it. And that's always what makes it rewarding because when they like the interview and they're having fun doing it, you know that you're doing the show right. And that's important as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. We've it's nice to hear when someone says, Oh, that's a really good question, or something like that, that you put in the research. But yes, when you could definitely tell right away how it's how it's going. Uh I think in all the shows, we've only had one where I didn't think it went well, <laughs> but but uh, for the most part, everything's been, you, you try to put people at ease. I think there's a certain level of apprehension some, sometimes by a guest, perhaps, what are they going to ask me? What are they going to, you know, ask me something that I don't want to? We're not that type of show. I, I'm sure you're not either. So it's just, you have to put someone at ease and they're willing to talk. Yeah. So Jonathan, I mean, um, how much would you say, I know you do the show once a week, but how much, how many hours weekly do you put in trying to find guests out there? Because I mean, you really have to do the searching. You have to look at different ways to find them. I mean, it's not easy to find the guests you want. I mean, do you have to put in several hours during the week just on research alone? 
I think that's probably cutting it short, <laughs> but yes, yeah, it's it's a lot for, for every, as you well know, for every one that says yes, they're like around, you know, a dozen that say you know, no and never get back to you. So it's it's a lot of time putting in and you have people that sometimes say yes and then don't do it. Or sometimes they'll, you know, come back to me at such and such a time. So it's it's a lot of time to put in guests, you know, uh, you know, trying to secure guests for the show that you're interested in having. Yeah. And the other challenging thing too, Jonathan, is sometimes you could ask a guest to come on and they're very receptive. They, uh, you know, they might ask a link so they could look at some of your shows, but sure. really they're very, uh, my dog. <laughs> like I said, receptive to coming on, but then you'll find others. They'll want like, uh, you know, a whole background of like, uh, how many shows have you done? Uh, which, what does it entail? You know, so you always have to be prepared. Like you have to make sure that when they're asking you the tough questions, you're able to give them the right responses. Yeah, it's, we've had some for sure. For sure that we've had some about, you know, the, send the link or whatever so I can see the show. There are some who want to know how many, you know, subscribers you have, how many, uh, <laughs> what's your, what are your views per per episode or something like that. And for the for the most part, it's not been that. But yes, occasionally there are people who want to know every little detail about about the show. And uh, but you know, I get it. I get certain things like that. But they, you know, some things that they ask sometimes are a little bit outlandish too. Right, uh, Jonathan. Obviously, the key uh, word in your show is retro, which means you're like me in a lot of ways that you love the classic TV, classic films, things like yes. that. So, um, I mean, what do you basically, I mean, it seems like to me you would have any guest on that's willing to come on, but I mean, where, where do you kind of like, what's the theme basically? Is it eighties, nineties, uh, eighties, seventies? How does it work? It's from all over. And it really goes all over. Uh, you know, as far back we can go, we've had people on that tour who are currently in their nineties. So their work was, you know, main work is, in the 60s or, or around that time as well but uh doesn't there is no set time period it's just anything that you know that we enjoyed from the past i i've even looked for you know people that that were like 10 years ago putting out something that i liked you know because it's still not current yeah. uh but yeah it's it's really anything from the from the youth and we've had a lot of different shows from a lot of different decades just about things that i and sometimes it's just you know I don't necessarily think that the guest is going to get a lot of views, but it's something that I enjoy or I can enjoy. So it doesn't matter. You know, it's, we have fun doing it. Yeah. And I think like, you know, the older audience, they're really going to want to tune into it because I know for me, like um, having Don most on the one time I had him on, I mean, a lot of uh, people from the seventies and eighties really watched that because I mean, he was, on a popular show called Happy Days. And I mean, they really got into that. So you may not get the views you want in some shows, but some of them you'll get a lot because people really do. They love the classic stuff. I mean, it, it's nostalgic to them. And I mean, they really get into that. So that part of it, number one, you're getting to interview somebody that, you know, you watched when you were younger. And then you're also uh, entertaining people who can just go on, you know, your your site or YouTube, whatever. They could see this interview. No, uh, yeah, that's it. We just did, we just posted, I think the last video, as when we're recording this, the last one we posted was the host of another podcast, uh, you know, about the Six Million Dollar Man and Bionic Woman, the OSI files. So that was the last one that we've posted. And that got a ton of comments just from people because they love the show. It's, you know, I, I, I don't think that you know, maybe the podcasters have their own fan base, which, yes, it's, that's true that they come and check it out. But there were a lot of people that just made comments because they loved the Bionic Women or Six Million Dollar Men. So you, we try to have a lot of everything just because you never know who's going to be interested. You know, you try to draw from different aspects. We've had authors. One of one thing that I loved, I don't know if you remember, and sorry for my dog, but the uh, the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Remember those yeah, books? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah. we had, which I loved. They were, they were my favorite books as a kid. Edward Packard. So yeah. we found the creator of that series and it was just i loved speaking to him about the whole process of that series so we try to get a little bit of everything in there from wall walks you know authors singers uh behind the scenes whatever it may be 
Yeah, and interestingly enough, um, <laughs> when you have the ones behind the scenes, it's so cool because you get to like uh, find out what they what goes into their day, their weeks, their months, and doing all this. And I mean, they really do put in so much work. I mean, the actors put in work, but they basically have to just follow the script, you know, act it out, and stuff like that. Writers, directors, producers. So much work that they put in, and you really realize that when you interview them. No, that's true. We, you know, like I just said about people behind the scenes, you don't know, people don't always think about what's going on in movies or or shows, what, what has to entail to get it all done right. So it's a lot of fun. We, you know, we had on someone who actually did casting for, for shows, for movies. So it's all fascinating little aspects, sub, you know, about what goes into it. You never really think about this. Some there is someone's job to make sure that they get the right actors for the for the roles. So yeah, I, I definitely am fascinated with all aspects of the field. You know, Jonathan, one guest, and you and I talked about it off the air that you had on Bonnie Bartlett, and I loved her in Saint Elsewhere. I mean, I will never forget the night her and her husband William Daniels they both get me on the same night together, which was heard of as a husband and wife to do that especially on the same show like that and i mean it was great listening to her but you've had so many other guests on what are some of your favorite guests that you've had i when people ask this i i, I do say all of them because but I, I do love and that's that's sincere i do love everyone you know otherwise you don't ask on because you know you, you have to be a fan of some capacity of some way to ask someone on. But with that being said, there for different reasons. I've had I've loved a lot of the uh, certain. There are certain guests that I love just because of what it meant to me. Uh, one was Paul Williams, and I, you know I try not to be gushing or in awe of the people, and it's sometimes hard not to. But Paul Williams for, was for sure one because it's just what I felt as a kid. You know I loved him as a kid, and so that helped. Another. That I, you know, Sid Croft being another one, but uh, I'll give a couple of examples that were just outside the box because we had Ron Mino Palouse. I don't know if you remember the the show Voyagers. From the oh yeah. yeah, right. So I love that show. It was only on one season. I loved yeah. that show. It was my favorite show. I was like, that was the first time I remember being really devastated when the show was canceled because I loved it so much. It was a time travel show, so. You know, just to have him on was brought me right back to childhood because that was the show that I loved the most as a kid. So having him on was fun, getting to ask all these questions about Voyagers. And uh, we recently had on a fun one for us just because the way it happened, uh, Kev Kevin J. O'Connor from The Mummy. Yeah. yeah. The movie, right. So he came, he came on because he had reached out that he watched the show, that he liked, enjoyed the show. He just reached out to me out of the blue. So that was really fun just to get someone who's who had watched us first before I asked them. So that, that was incredible. And he was incredibly entertaining as well. Yeah. And I mean, really, like in a lot of ways, I mean, you just realize, too, you know, there are people like you and me, but you never know sometimes if the fame gets to them at all or anything like that. But so many of them are just so genuine people. Yep. and. I remember the first time I had uh, Dwight Gooden on the former New York Mets and Yankees pitcher. Which I'm extremely um, jealous of, I told you. <laughs> yeah. But um, having him on, mm -hmm. I, I will never forget. Uh, we had to like make sure he knew how to use the, uh, the stream yard. And we did a test run. And I'll just never forget. He's in the bank. And he's like, hey, how you doing? Um, you know, I'm in the bank. So if it's a little noisy, that's why. <laughs> he's so polite and stuff. And I mean, that's really the thing, too, is that you – you realize they're not just good actors, good baseball players, athletes, whatever. They're good people, too. Yeah, I, I said at the beginning, I, I think over 99% of the people that we've had on were really gracious and nice and, and just really kind to, to you know, you. And you could tell. You, you said it to yourself. You could tell if it's not going well. Um but for the majority, it's not that's not been my experience. For the majority, it's everyone has just been so kind and uh, genuine on when we've been talking to them. And, and the funny thing is that they have told stories about other <laughs> actors or something, which just yeah. shattered my image and just ruined things for me. Because I, I love those other actors that were mentioned. 
and and you know it's it's so disappointing sometimes to hear about other people that you do like but the ones that we've had on have just been nothing but uh kind i will i will say yeah most definitely and um I mean, it's so much fun to do it. And you know, obviously, Ike, I'm sure. I mean, you le- you finish that interview and you just feel like, uh, wow, I, I got to talk to this person or I got to talk to that person because you remember them growing up. You really do. So, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, I think that like Don Most, like I said, I was a big fan. I love the Ralph Mal character. You know, mm-hmm. when I was a kid. I loved uh, the show Family Ties, and I had Scott Valentine on. And, I mean, he was just such a nice guy, great guy to talk to on and off the air. And that's just the thing is that you kind of – you're talking to people that when you were a kid, you never in a million years would think that you would ever get to have one conversation with. So that, to me, always makes it fun. And, it, you know, it, it's worth all the, the legwork that goes into trying to get them to come on. Yes, totally agree. I, I, I Sometimes I sit in – you know, I try not to show it, but I'm sitting in awe. And, and you know, I, I think back, you know, 12 year old me would have been flipping out right now <laughs> speaking to this person. I never would have imagined it. So, yes, it, it is it is rewarding and it fulfills, you know, something inside of you based, based on the fandom that you had for them growing up. And, you know, that's what you hope that people tune in, that they get a little sense of that when they when they tune in to watch. Yeah. I mean, you really do. And I mean, I really believe this, though, Jonathan. And a lot of times you could do a show without a guest and you could have a good show. You could talk about something, you know, about you could talk about sports. You could talk about something in Hollywood. You could keep the people engaged. But really, when you have a guest on, it just makes the show so much better because honestly, people want to hear their story. They kind of want to hear what it was like growing up, you know, all the ins and outs of everything. So I always say that while the show can work, um, if you don't have a guest at times, most of the time you need a guest for it to really, uh, you know, thrive. Yeah. It also depends on how you're talking. So you, you, like we discussed before, whether you're doing, whether you're a solo host or you have a co-host. But, yeah, so it's fun. I try to mix it up a little bit because I do have at least someone else to bounce off of when we do these shows without a guest. So it's, you know, Ike and I discussing, can be discussing a certain TV show, a certain movie, and just go on. And a lot of times – that leads into me picking his brain about certain aspects of his career. So he's, he's kind of like, you know, besides a co-host, he's also like a permanent guest because there is someone to ask questions to about, you know, the back, you know, behind the scenes in the industry. But yeah, I do like, I do like having the guests on too, just because I can learn a little bit more about different aspects of them, something that I didn't know about before. Yeah. So let me ask you what, what would you say, Jonathan, is the most challenging thing for you when you do an interview? What do you say to it, like when you're doing it? What would you say is the thing that uh, can be difficult sometimes? Besides getting the, the guest? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Besides getting the guest, it's uh, research. I think trying – and here's the truth here, too. I A lot of times when I'm, when I'm going to have some I'll, – I'll just watch a show sometimes. And there are other podcasts that uh, – I enjoy watching there too. And I, I enjoyed your good in one very much, by the way. So it's a, it's, there are ones that I watch, but when I do have a guest on, when someone's booked, I try not to watch any other interviews with them beforehand because I don't want to be influenced by them. And also there are some questions that are natural that you're going to ask. And if I see, you know, you, you had the guest on and asked the question. Someone else had the guest on and asked the question. Then they'll be like, oh, I can't ask that. But you have to ask that. You have to ask yeah. that things. So I don't want to, I don't want to like look at other people when they've, when they've had someone on that we're going to have on. So it's, and you're trying, you do try to find questions that, hey, I hope no one's asked them this before. So you, there is a sense that, that I want to try to ask them something outside the box a little bit too. But there are going to be inevitably some questions that are the same as everyone else. Right. And, uh, you know, it's funny, too. You talk about watching other other interviews and you're right about that, um, because I remember when I had Sean Kanan on. Uh, he's been an actor forever. He was in the Crown Kid uh, General Hospital. But he's um, on the wish list as well. <laughs> so. Yeah. And when I had him on, you know, the thing that had happened when he was uh, filming Karate Kid 3, he got really hurt and he almost died. I mean, he had like a freak accident during that movie. And, you know, it was touch and go for him. So, you know, 
innate behavior says you're going to ask that question. It's just normal to ask. But come to find out, he would get very annoyed when all the inner all the hosts would ask him that question. He just felt like, you know, that was 30 some odd years ago. You don't need to ask me that all the time. So knowing what I know now, I wish I didn't watch some of the interviews <laughs> that he was in. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is tough. It's it is again. There are going to be questions that you have to ask. It's it's just it'd be negligent not to ask them. And I know that they might get annoyed, but you know, you your your viewers might necessarily be my viewers, vice versa, and the same with other you know podcasters too. So it's I think it is negligent not to ask them certain things that people your audience might want to know about. That's for one. But yeah, you do try to find other things too. And if you, if knowing this now, what you just said, if I have him on, I'll try to avoid that question. But <laughs> <laughs> Right. So let me ask you, Jonathan, for people who are just getting to see you for the first time that are listening to this, watching this, what day does your show normally air? And when, um, where could they view the other shows? We, we, I release all the episodes every Tuesday night, you know, late Tuesday mm -hmm. night, so to aim for that Wednesday. So I, I always tell people Wednesday, it's, you know, we release Wednesday, but Tuesday night I post it onto YouTube, but on all our social media channels, uh, I'll post it on Wednesday. And by that, by Wednesday, I also mean Tuesday after midnight. <laughs> so that's, so it's, it's ready for that. So it is kind of late Tuesday. But, yeah, we release every episode. Ep Late Tuesday, early when you know, or Wednesday is when the new show is released. We have a YouTube channel, Pop Culture Retro. We also have uh, an Instagram page, a, a Twitter page, and a Facebook page. Wow, that's awesome! It really is. And uh, who's your next guest? Who could we look forward to seeing this week? This week, Ike. Well, this week, Ike and I are releasing a. Uh, a forgotten film segment. Every once in a while, we do a forgotten films, you know, just talking about uh, thing movies that are not crazy, maybe on everyone's radar still, or maybe didn't get the recognition that they deserve. So it's uh, this week one we're doing Time Band. It's Time Band. It's releases this week, and next week we have uh, Christopher Knight from the Brady Bunch releasing. Oh wow, that's going to be uh, fun to see. It was a fun one. He was great. Yeah. So, um, Jonathan. Uh, I really look forward to watching the upcoming shows. I think what you're doing is awesome. And for Same somebody who, for somebody who does a podcast, I really could relate to what the work is you have to do. And I really do applaud the work you work. And folks, I really encourage you to tune in to Pop Culture Retro. It's a great show. So many great interviews. And I can't wait to watch the Christopher Knight one, who, by the way, I've been trying to get on. So, you know hint hint there but uh, <laughs> uh i really do applaud the work you're doing and thank you for giving me a few minutes today it was a real honor for me thanks so much for having me. it's a lot of fun mike thank you jonathan well folks i really do encourage you to go watch jonathan and ike's show i mean they're doing a great job they're very knowledgeable they do their homework and it's so much fun to watch and listen to and you know what one thing that for me who also does a talk show you can you can learn you can never stop learning. You could always learn new things, and I've learned different things by uh, watching their show. They do an outstanding job, and they really um, know what they're talking about. And it's really cool to listen to them. So please tune into that because you won't be disappointed. For in the spotlight, I'm Mike Kanichi saying goodbye, everyone. <laughs>